another day or even later in the day and let people like Keith on the A3, you know, get their problems sorted out and they can get on their way. It, the second one, is your car prepared? Have you got enough fuel? You know, I'm sure Keith has been turning his um, engine on and off. I heard him earlier on this morning saying he's been turning it on to keep warm, then turning it off again. Absolutely essential you've got enough fuel in case you do get caught. Have you got enough warm clothing, food and drink, uh, just in case you get caught out? And the final one, before you set out, please check your route. Make sure that the weather conditions are suitable. Make sure that any travel conditions, uh, you know what they are, so before you go and join the end of the queue, because that's not going to help anybody if you do. And once you do get on your way, if you do travel today, drive with absolute utmost caution. Don't go thinking, just because the road's been gritted, you can drive along at 70 miles an hour. There's still a lot of danger out there, and you've got to give room for the car in front. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, quick uh, top three texts on our console. Uh, it's not snowing in Bournemouth. We haven't had any snow here, Steve. Uh, no snow in Dorset, Rob. Uh, and it's not snowing in Bournemouth, Pete. And another one. I haven't seen a single flake in pool from Steve. I feel left out by this outfit. Uh, some more schools news. 296 Gloucestershire schools are now closed out of around 330 state schools and children's centres in total. And more than 200 schools closed in Northumberland, County Durham and Tyne and Weir. And across Greater Manchester, 780 nine schools are closed. For more detail on the actual schools, um, go to your BBC local radio station or their website. It's a quarter past eight. And let's talk about trains. Rail services face more disruption today because of snow and low temperatures. Special trains have been running throughout the night to keep the tracks clear, but uh, many rail companies are expecting to run a reduced service today. Edward Welsh is from the Association of Train Operating Companies. Uh, tell us how services are being affected. Well, the worst part uh, of the country is really in London and the South East. Uh, many of the train companies running in and out of the capital have reduced the services. But there's also localised problems in North East Scotland and parts of North East England. OK, and so are things going to get better or are things going to get worse? Well, it, it, it is difficult to say. I expect things will take some time to improve. I mean, we expect the next 24 hours to have quite a lot of heavy snow in the South East. What the train companies are doing is that they are running fewer services but longer trains. Um, and those trains, many of them are getting through. So I think my advice to your listeners would be to check services before you go out. Um, we, we've launched a uh, dedicated recorded information line this morning, National Rail recorded information line, and, and I, I'll give you that number. It's 08453 017641. I'll repeat that. 08453 017641. Uh, this is a recorded information service which will allow you to check every single train company in the country right. and find out with how their services are doing. Let me put one text to you. I'm at work. Cannot hear your program today. However, I do hope uh, that you will have someone on from Southeastern Trains to explain their outrageous performance. We just had a dusting of snow in South London today, but no trains before 7 a.m. Pathetic. That's from Mike in London. Um, well, I believe that Southeastern are um, running perhaps something like 60% of their services. I'm so sorry for that listener, but um, I do understand that that, that is uh, unpleasant for him. But what my understanding is that the train companies like Southeast and others in, in and out of London are running services uh, along the train, and it would mean to be patient and wait for those trains to arrive. Okay, thank you very much, Edward Welsh from the Association of Train Operating Companies. It's 8.17. Across the UK. This is BBC Radio 5.9. Breakfast with Nikki Campbell and Sheila Fogarty. For five live news headlines this morning, heavy snowfall has forced thousands of schools across the UK to close for a second day. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Carey, is calling for a priority to be given to Christian immigrants looking to enter the United Kingdom. And Marks and Spencer has reported its first like for like sales growth in more than two years. Here's Helen. The M40 remains closed southbound junctions 11 to 10, that's Banbury through to Brackley while they recover a jackknife lorry. Two lanes closed both ways because of snow on the M23 junction 10 to 11, that's Quarry through to Peace Pottage. In the main, any snow that has fallen on motorways is being cleared away by the salt. Lane 3 could be closed if you are heading out and about. Just take it easy if you're about to head onto a motorway, but you should be okay. Police in the borders are urging that they're not
travel at all this morning. Many roads closed, including the A7, the A703 and the A697. And real problems south of Edinburgh, the A702 is closed at Hill End and the A1 badly affected between Edinburgh and Dunbar. The A66 is closed, both to Brough. The A1 has reopened at Scotch Corner, southbound between there and Leaming Bar, but do take it easy. Northbound the A34, that's blocked at East Eldley. It's because of the number of lorries getting stuck heading up the hill. Uh, the A3 south of Guildford, well worth avoiding. It's closed on various stretches. The A322 still closed at Bracknell. The A417 is closed at Wantage. The North Devon Link Road, the A361 is closed between the M5 and Barnstable. And the A30 through Dorset at Devon and Cornwall. Again, worth avoiding if you can, particularly over the higher stretches. At the airports, Gatwick, Bristol, Blackpool, Robin Hood, Exeter, Cardiff and Newquay airports will have flights suspended just at the moment. And that National Rail Inquiries number, in case you want to check your train, is running is 0843 017641. That's 0843 017641. If you can help us out with the travel, and the travel hotline number is 0373 100 500. Tell them, ladies, bye bye travel. The Five Live Daytime team going with a new 10 12 clock formation. And the referee blows his whistle. With that, signals the next six hours underway. A new year and a new look. Five Live Daytime lineup. Weekdays from 10. And straight away it goes to Victoria Derbyshire. Beautiful control. As it is to Gabby Logan. Weekdays 12 till 2. Logan carries it and now gives it to Richard Bacon. Monday to Thursday, 2 to 4. Bacon takes it on the tail and sends it in. Absolutely brilliant. flying around in Cape Town at the moment. Let's deal with the, 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 the latest, I suppose, which is Anderson. Um, these pictures of him sort of appearing to pick up the ball. What did you make of them? Yeah, it's clear that the, this TV have shown some footage of yesterday, Jimmy Hansen, just having a little bit of a pick of the, the ball. And I'm not too sure what light will be made of it, but I don't think South Africa are going to make a fish, an official complaint, but it certainly looks like Jimmy Hansen has had some kind of play on the ball. It didn't help him because South Africa are 300 and 30, lit, uh, 30 runs in front, 312 for two. But you have to really look at the world of cricket. If it was Pakistan, what would we be making it? So it's, uh, it's a very delicate situation. And I suppose if the, if the, the score, if the runs at the time had been much less for South Africa, they might well have complained more vehemently. Well, you, you'd think so, yeah. And as I say, it didn't help. But you know, Stuart Broad stood on the ball, and then Jimmy Henderson collects the ball, whether it was next over the over, over after, and starts playing around the area where Jim, um, Stuart Broad had created the scuff mark. They were just trying to get the ball to reverse swing. It looks quite bad on the TV screens, you know. Quite disappointing because I don't like to see that kind of action in a game. And unfortunately, England are now in a real fight to try and save this game, and this will probably be the talking point for the next few days. Do you think the ICC will look into both, really, Anderson picking at the ball, and, and, and you know, is it time to just say to cricketers, don't put your foot on the ball? 